in the majority of states, implied or expressed consent on the part of the victim to participate is not an available defense. What does that one mean? We already also kind of uh, spoke about this one a little bit, right? So what that means is that in um, most of the states don't consider consent as a defense, right? So uh, you are the hazer, and then you, you, you cannot go to, go to the court and say, well, he or she voluntarily participated in it, right? Is this only What do we think about that question? Does anybody have an opinion about it? I think it will be applied at work as well. Yes. So it will be at work, uh, at a cold like that, it could be considered hazing? Because remember that the definition that we had was um, that uh, any of those acts that we already discussed that are utilized for somebody to gain membership into the or to have control over the members of the group, right? Um, the definition that we had, that we spoke about earlier in the conversation, was taken straight from the NCAA, you know, rule about hazing. So it's kind of a this sport, sport uh, implementation of it. But as we are seeing, there is also uh, actual laws, actual legislation at the state, and actually in some cases at the federal level. Uh, but the federal levels are not really that as stringent as the state ones. Yes? So, like, my dad, when he was in a fraternity, mm -hmm. they, like, got brands. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, all of it was, like, they all wanted to do it, like, because it was, like, they really thought it, like, seemed like money or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, some of them got even multiple, but, like, say, like, the school or whatever, the president of the fraternity or whatever found out, um, or, like, they became, like, a court like, because it says, um, like, the consent of the victim is not, like, the An available defense, yeah. uh-huh. So, like, what if, like, they really did, but, like, oh, I really, like, wanted to do it, like, is it is still not a defense in the end? It is not even a defense there. But here's the thing. Um, this happens when the big victim consents, apparently, you know, during the activity, whatnot, and then, let's say, two months down the road, he or she changes her mind and goes and says, I was hazed, I was branded, I was, you know. Uh, so at that point, they probably are, you know, uh, they, are part, they become kind of like a plaintiff. Uh, so they probably can say, well, I was under this uh, coercion, I was, under, I was under this, you know, um, yeah, they pretty much coerced me to do it, you know. Um, they also are saying, well, but I actually just wanted to do it also, you know, they, they are also kind of like going, uh, making a defense case for the for the other party, and that would be a little bit awkward, I suppose. Uh, but you see what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say is that at this point, it's the victim, the one that, that brings the, the suit, and then they're probably most likely not gonna make a very strong case, oh, well, yeah, I did consent. You know. The problem is I consented, but here's what the circumstances that drove, uh, drove me to. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Um, I suppose that if it is a third party, let's kind of create another scenario where uh, your dad and his friends did it, and then the school knew or, or was, you know, sued for it, let's say by one of the parents of the, of the person who got brought to mind. Um, then that wouldn't be an available defense, but it sure would help the institution if the members of the fraternity went and sat on their on their side, right? They say, no, oh, well, no, the institution had nothing to do with it. It's not an available defense as as long as the uh, victim is actually kind of uh, being the one strongly uh, seeking some sort of uh, uh, damages, right? Compensation. Right? Does that make any sense? What I just explained. Um, 
So more on these uh, penalties. 34 of the 35 of the 45 uh, states that have legislation uh, addressing hazing uh, classify hazing as misdemeanor. Well, eight states out of those 44 states that have legislation about hazing uh, expressly provide that hazing resulting in serious bodily harm or death is classified as a felony. So you see, we have the 44 out of uh, uh, the 50 states have legislation addressing hazing, and they, uh, these are kind of uh, numbers telling us uh, the degree to which that legislation covers hazing. Does that make any sense? So 35 out of the 44 uh, categorize it as a uh, misdemeanor, and then eight out of the 44 pretty much said, uh, in certain circumstances, it is a felony. So that's to say that depending on the state, uh, hazing can carry uh, serious penalties, right? So violating the state hazing statute can get you, again, depending on the state, depending on the circumstances, uh, a fine of between $10 and up to $5,000. Uh, jail time ranging from uh, 10 days up to a year. F yes, to a year. And then the withholding of your diploma. Expulsion from expulsion from school is another penalty. Uh, and also the recession of the right to assemble in, on school campus. On campus. So pretty much they take away your right to assemble on campus. Another of the So the ones that are not on the screen are expulsion from school and your right to assemble from campus can be taken away. Um, so what are some of the defenses for for, for a hazing claim? What do you think would be one defense for it? You're accused of hazing, or you're accusing somebody of ha uh, hazing you, what would be a defense that the hazer could um, try to amount for his or her case? Or is something that is not defendable? So assumption of risk. At the end of the day, that's kind of like the first go to defense, right? Uh, again, whether it'll stick and whether it'll be successful, uh, it's a matter of the process to play out, right? Uh, but that's kind of like the first uh, defense that most people accused of hazing uh, are going to go with, right? Well, you know, it, it, they had the option to do it or not. They assumed the risk, right? Uh, so it's the most used defense, assumption of risk. Um, the student athlete assumes the risk of being injured due to hazing. And then of course here, we're talking about the uh, student athlete because this is being uh, presented to us in the context of sports, but it can be the fraternity uh, member hopeful, right? Or is that fraternity member one of the, I don't know, uh, the candidate, right? Uh, he or she, well, it'll be a sorority for, for the lady. Uh, they assumed the risk, right? And they knew that they could uh, be injured due to the hazing uh, activities. So, and, and remember, it's, it's one of those pieces of the law where we have to be cognizant of that piece that tell us uh, consent is not really an available defense. And then we also have that the most used uh, defense is assumption of risk that in a way kind of a, uh, touches on that consent is right. So again, it depends on the on the person defending the defendant uh, and how they kind of award all this out, right? So uh, prosecution is probably going to say, well, you cannot claim that, and then the um, uh, defense is going to 
you know, argue the reasons why they think that should be allowed as a defense in one house. Right. Questions or comments about it so far? So you said this is like similar to like activity, like a sport activity, or is it considered different? Um, it, is, it is similar to, I mean, assumption of risk is kind of about the same as when we were talking about negligence and assumption of risk as a defense for it as well, oh. right? Pretty much is saying that the person uh, has knowledge of the potential consequences and, and then they still participated in them, right? Mm -hmm. And that they knew that by engaging in them, there was a risk of, again, being injured or being hurt or being burned or being, you know, I don't know, have a broken one ear due to the activity, mm -hmm. the hazing activity, right? So yeah, it is the same. Assumption of risk remains the same throughout it, right? Whether it is, we're talking about uh, product liability or premise liability or negligence or now um, anything, it remains the same, assumption of risk. All right, any other questions, comments, or concerns? All right, so we have some hazing impact on the uh, haze, uh, and by this we mean on the person or on the party being hazed. Um, some of them are physical, emotional, and mental instability. Can you see that? Can you see that being an impact on a person that is being that has been hazed or that is being hazed? Does that one need further? Well, we see it there. We see it there. Right? We see it. Sleep deprivation. That's actually one of the activities, right? People being deprived, uh, deprived from sleeping. Uh, loss of se sense of control and empowerment. We can also see how that could be uh, one. Um, Especially when we talk about, oh, if you're kind of a, one of your, uh, one of the hazing involves you being the servant of the house, right? That can be kind of a, I, I can see that being uh, resulting in this loss of control uh, and empowerment, right? Declining grades and coursework, that kind of, is that actually the first one in pretty much all of them, right? Uh, if you are your drain and stable and feeling down, uh, then your ability to concentrate, focus, and kind of even get things done because you have to be attending to everybody else in the house, then it can also suffer, right? Uh, relationship with friends, significant others, and family suffer, again, connected to, to that uh, psyche, you know, uh, abuse, if you will, that you have been undergoing, that the victim has been um, any others that you can think of? So another of the impacts is is a post-traumatic stress syndrome. Post-traumatic stress, stress syndrome will be another one. Um, loss of respect for an interest in being part of the organization loss of respect for an interest in being part of the organization. But, you know, you probably kind of, uh, uh, if you used to think about that fraternity, that organization, uh, if you used to have any high esteem, you know, after you undergo that, you kind of, uh, you change your, your, you know, your view, your, your concept that you have. In it. So one more time, uh, loss, loss of respect for an interest in being part of the organization. Loss or respect, loss of respect for an interest in being part of the organization. And then the last one is erosion of trust within the group members. Erosion of trust within the group members. So you lose the trust, you know, in the people that belong to the organization. Lose your trust, but you respect as well, right? Erosion of trust within the group members. Erosion of trust within the group members. Okay, so that's the impact uh, that hazing has on the person or on the party in being case. What about the impact that hazing has um, 
on the people doing the hazing, so in this case the hazer. Are there any impacts for those, for that party? <coughs> if you are the hazer or the, the people that are the hazer, do they, are they also impacted by it in some way? Yeah. All right, so force like it's like, no. so they are being hazed by having to do hazing, which is, we can happen as well, right? Um, so in that case, they will be like, and yeah, but then also will be, also will be, <coughs> but at that point with the fall and the both maybe, hazers and haze, if you are being forced to do hazing, as part of your hazing, you are supposed to haze, so you will be like both, right? Yeah. I mean, in that case, that would be like a, a whole lot of therapy. Um, <laughs> Lynn. Like, so like, I've been hazed, like, on national teams, and it's like, once you get older, it's like tradition. Haze. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're doing. So it's like when you're hate, you're the person hates you, it's just kind of like, eh, they did it to me, I'm doing it to them, kind of thing. Like, yeah. That's the mentality of it. I think that, like, like you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. You are, like, kind of hazed into thinking that you have to yeah. haze. Like, I don't know. Yeah. And when it comes to hazing, we all have our opinions about, about it, right? And, and there are certain instances in which I personally think that. If it is like a rite of passage and it's not really like too out of control, an activity, you know, but I think that it's just like a lot of fraternities and teams and people try to outdo each other. And so I just get too out of control and that's what I don't understand. The branding, the tattoo, the paddle, the drink the five paddles of vodka. Is that a thing or I just made it up? Am I just starting a new hazing trend? Anyway, <laughs> Curtis. Yeah, no, my situation's kind of similar to her but for college sports. Uh huh. So they, should, they should go to team building. Yeah, team building. And again, you know, I mean, are you guys willing to mention some of this stuff, or that's just, we're well, not like, going to talk about that? I just steal my um, head coach's dog from the house. Okay. Like, and then I got in trouble with the police, but it was like, <laughs> But then, honestly, the, 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 pop, the puppy was never harmed, and then the puppy was returned to, to the owner. I didn't have the dog, like, and then the head coach knew that it happens. Like, everyone knows it happens. So it's kind of like okay. a well-known secret. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like it's kind of like unspoken for, but like oh, okay. there. and like, there was other shit that we did. But yeah. Okay. It's not really. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So things like that, you know, as long as the puppies, you know, and you have to do some treats and some toys and whatnot, and you know, and then go back to home. That's kind of fun, you know. Probably the guy will be, you know, scared for a while. Where's my dog? Yeah. Just about Curtis, what about you? Are you gonna tell us a little bit about it or we're just gonna keep it as it is? I'll think about it. Probably. All right, let's think about it then. All right. So anyways, we were talking about like the impact on the uh, on the person doing the hazing, right? On the hazer. And to a degree they kind of uh, look uh, similar. Uh, decline, decline in grades and coursework. Again, depending if the person might be in trouble, like we said, you know, once it's kind of uh, out of the box and it just becomes uh, something that he or she needs to uh, devote a lot of energy into trying to figure out how to fix it, if you will. And so again, that can translate into that person's uh, grades and coursework decline, right? Same thing with relationships with friends, significant others and family may suffer, uh, maybe because of different uh, motives as with the haste, right, of the person being haste. In this case, again, it's just, Again, mindful of uh, uh, trouble, uh, maybe the, uh, his circle of family and, and friends know about it and that can be shameful, you know? So uh, those relationships may, may suffer because of that. Uh, loss of connection, connections to uplands through the organization. Um, say that at this stage we're talking about the person being uh, taken away, the right to go back into the campus or to even uh, to the fraternity house or, you know, that type of deal, right? Uh, media scrutiny, you know, when he's found out that he or she was the uh, the one, I don't know, what is one of those hating things that we hear about in the news? Which one? Like a death? Well, let's say a death, you know, there was the cause that, oh, you, you were the one who made that person drink those five bottles of vodka and then that person's health was really in jeopardy. Due to alcohol poisoning, right? And 
then the media is pretty much asking, why did you do it? Did you, didn't you think about the repercussions and, you know, and kind of uh, that type of thing, right? Um, so that can lead to damage to one's personal reputation. Damage to one personal reputation, that's probably the one thing that that person might be now be known for, right? So it can be a little bit tricky for them to get a job and whatnot, right? So damage to one's personal reputation will be another one. Um, the next one is work. What? Okay, work uh, sense of leadership. So, you know, that kind of I get work. As in, uh, Can you repeat that? Work sense of leadership. You know, as in your sense of leadership suffers, you kind of a start second guessing, kind of a, it, it gets weakened. You know, sense of leadership, you have failure as you have you have failed as a leader, right? Or that's how uh, you will be perceived, and probably how you feel as well, right? This um, is just if you get caught, correct? That is, yes. I mean, this is all you know. This when it comes out to light, yeah, because that's when when everything gets to be questioned, right? Like your choices and your decisions. If you don't get caught, you kind of like, eh, you know, it just happens. It's part of it, right? So you probably never think about it twice. Um, but again, if you actually get in trouble with that, this is kind of a, uh, some of the impacts that may, that may happen on you. And then the last one is um, feelings of shame and guilt. Feelings of shame and guilt. We're talking about educational settings and institutions. There is another party that may also feel the impact of Haitian, right? In this case, is the institution itself, right? So, what are the Haitian impact on the institution? What do we think those impacts will be? How would Haitian would impact an institution? Yes. Bad reputation. Bad reputation, right? So it's kind of a, uh, one of those, especially if it's foreseeable, if you know that you have. A sorority, um, fraternities, then, you know, as administrative, as an administrative, let's go back, as administration, you should kind of have policies in place that kind of try to address that because you kind of can foresee that. So you have policies and rules and conduct for the houses, right? Sororities and fraternities, right? And probably some follow ups or, you know, close uh, checking on them. So the first one is that loss of reputation within the campus community, local area, and nationally. You know, it can become a part of the national news. The, the so and so education of uh, institution of higher education uh, has these hazing cases happening. It can be worse if they happen repeatedly, right? Uh, loss of recognition for the organization, team or club. And on other communities revoked, a lot of these, you know, especially fraternities or sororities, they have kind of uh, national associations and chapters, right? So they may just kind of uh, distance themselves from that uh, institution that pretty much um, allow for hazing to happen in, in, in the country. Does that make any sense? And then civil damages may be levied against the organization. So, you know, this is pretty much saying that what? Yeah, so they can sue it and pretty much be into, you know, have to pay a lot of uh, compensatory damages potentially, right? For, for the victims or the parents or anybody. Uh, organizations, officers may be held responsible. Organization officers may be held responsible. So here again, we're talking about uh, those in administrative roles that probably should have, again, done something. Uh, to prevent the hazing from happening, right? So one, one more time, that one is organization. Organizations, officers may be held responsible. And then the last one is an erosion of the true meaning and values of the organization. Erosion of the true meaning and values of the organization. Erosion of the true meaning 
and values of the organization. So that goes kind of far with the first one, right? That reputation gets tarnished, and then, um, you know, people begin to question what the organization stands for, and, you know, how they conduct their business, and what they give priority to, and how seriously they take student safety, you know, in that category. Does that make any sense? Questions, comments, or concerns so far? All right. Uh, we arrive to hazing policies as relate as they relate to sports. Uh, so the United States Olympic Committee has a handbook in the say sport policies, uh, and they have in that handbook they have a definition, um, you know, for hazing. And it's pretty similar to the definition we saw the first day that looks like the one from the incident. Right? Coercing, requiring, forcing, or willfully tolerating any humiliating, unwelcome, or dangerous activity that serves as a condition for A, joining a group, or B, being socially accepted by a group, by a group member, or any act or conduct described as facing under federal or state law. And then the USOC does have an exception, uh, but it pretty much raises that hazing that it's not include group or team activities uh, that A, are meant to establish uh, normative team behaviors, or B, promote some team cohesion. So it's again okay, certain activities that, you know, like I was kind of uh, alluding to earlier, uh, there is a, like a line that I think that most people in society would agree to, that, you know, they may be kind of a prankish, whatever you want to call it, but still they serve the purpose of, of building that community and, you know, this one again is taken like to that nth degree that is just, uh, you know, it becomes just something else. All right, so this is, in other words, this slide is just showing that uh, we have uh, higher bracket uh, sports organizations or governing bodies that have hazing in their groups, right? that have that address it. This is pretty much what the purpose of this slide is. Everybody, you know, you really need to, you might kind of like just get the highlights from this one. What I just said is pretty much what is important about this um, slide. Seeing that organization, governing agencies at the higher level have uh, rules uh, addressing cases in the books. All right. The next one is also the um, NCAA hazing policy. And this is actually the one that is on the first slide of this conversation. So if you wrote it from the first, on the first